Hey, welcome to another episode of The Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. Before we get into the segment, by the end of this video, I want you to do a few things for me. First of all, if you like the video, hit the like button. Please do. If you don't like it, hit unlike. It's okay. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Sometimes, as Jimmy Dole would say, you find yourself unsubscribed and you need to make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell right next to it so you can be notified when a new video is being dropped. Whoop, there it is. And more importantly, the Super Chat will be on for this segment. So if you want to donate uh, toward the efforts of Bob TV, that's freely up to you. I do have a job, but any amount will help toward the growth of this channel. And more important, let us help you help us by introducing you to a program. There's a link down below that says Equal Justice for All. You're going to click that video link. And there's some educational tutorial about a phenomenal program in America that is really making equal justice a reality for every citizen. So this program is phenomenal. Um, the proceeds from you participating in the program will go back 10%. will go back into um, the Bob TV YouTube channel. So anyway, my name is Robert Brown with The Rob Report. Let's get into it. Hey, good day. Welcome to another episode of Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. How you doing today? Well, the witch of Washington, D.C. and the witch of Wall Street has come from under her hold, under her rock, to go on a speaking tour about election integrity and voter suppression. That's right, the one who sat there and rigged the Democratic primary along with her goons actually going to go on a speaking tour Talking about rigging election. Let's watch this. That's right. Here's the article. It's in the heel. It says Hillary Clinton said vote says voter suppression has led to crisis in democracy in the U.S. And guess who kicked it off and started it off? Yo, behind. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton on Tuesday said the voter suppression aimed at keeping women and people of color from the polls have brought the U.S. to a crisis in democracy. Well, first of all. Voter suppression is not keeping black people from coming out and vote. Black people come out and vote 90% to 95% to almost 100% most of the time. Nothing's 100%, but they're in the high 90s when it comes to voting. So people of color vote. The problem is people of color are starting to get tired of voting for people who are, who are not going to be conscious, who's not going to be concerned about people of color. Why should I go out and keep voting for your butt when you do everything? Why should I go out there and fight for you to win when you do everything but fight for my people to win? She was speaking at George Washington University, Clinton accused Republicans. Of all people, she going to accuse Republicans. Oh, I got to tell you, she got some nerve. Of all people, she going to accuse Republicans for voter suppression. Now, Republicans do have their fair share of voter suppression when it comes to redistricting and, and things like that. Jury mending and all that. So they do have their part when it comes to rigging the election. But those are things that they do concerning the state. In their own party, they're not rigging the elections. Yeah, at the same time, we got Democrats who support Republicans staying in office because they don't want a lefty or Democratic Socialist to gain power in their party. They'll vote for a right-wing Democrat or they'll out, flat out vote for a Republican and support a Republican to keep from these keep these extreme lefties uh, from taking over the party. Yeah, they'll do that. They're doing it now. Kimberly Ellis, not not in charge of the uh, uh, Democratic Convention, or I mean Democratic Party. Uh, she's not the chair in California. Keith Ellison had to go through that mess. Poor Tim Canova couldn't get a foot in because of Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So this lady, this is supposed to be the brightest, smartest lady that lost to the dumbest fool on the planet. Yeah, she lost because she didn't know what the hell she was doing. 
She don't know how to campaign. Bernie Sanders trying to help her butt out. Sweating bees trying to help her out knowing he exposed her for the fraud she is. But yeah, he still supported her because he had to stop Trump. Even all that, she did not even want to listen to him. She lost, but she want to blame everybody else. And then she got the nerves to go on a circuit, on a speaking tour on voter suppression when she took the reins of the Democratic Party, bailed them out of debt, and pimped them for money all the way from, the, um, from her all the way down to the down ballots, took all the money from those people who ran from off, for office and put it in her campaign. And she got the nerves, the nerves, that mitigated goal to be out here talking about voter suppression when she suppressed the vote in her own party with superdelegates by announcing that she's winning before any of those superdelegates were voting by allowing the superdelegates to uh, claim that they're going to support her when they haven't even went in the ballot and allowing the media, the media, Lord Jesus, the media just sitting up there saying that she has so many pledged delegates when the delegates haven't voted. Using pledge delegates as a tool to suppress the vote from going out and vote for her. Why should I go out? She got all the pledge delegates. Why should my vote count? All the super delegates are out there voting for her. And the problem with the super delegates is for every voter, a super delegate is 1,000 vote to my one. And you telling me that ain't voter suppression? That they get 1,000 votes to my one? You telling me that ain't? Um, shaming our democracy and killing our democracy, allowing that crap? Get out of here with that mess, man. Really? She had the nerves to tell the down ballot to kiss my lily white behind. I'm taking that money and putting it back in my campaign. And all that money she got from Wall Street and all these corporate suck-ups, and I'm going to get on Elizabeth Warren soon, all that money she took for the corporate suck-ups, she wondered why working people wasn't supporting her behind. Why the middle class didn't go out in droves to vote for her like they did Obama. Because you ain't it. Everybody know you're faking a fraud, part-time broad, crook. And because of your mess, and because of the Democratic Party allowing her to do that, the only person who really stood against that is Tulsi Gabbard. Because of that, even when Bernie was sitting there trying to tell you what to do to win, you lost. Even though Bernie busts his butt out there for you, you cheated the man. You was, you was so arrogant, so snobbish, so elitist that you wouldn't even make that man your vice president to try to catch some of his supporters. Most of them was done. You could have put Bernie on the ticket and most of the supporters don't support frauds and they're not going to support people who support frauds. And Bernie supported the fraud, which put him in the category of a fraud. Now, he's better than Elizabeth Warren. Don't get me wrong. She's a fraud all by herself. And I'm going to get to that in a moment because y'all falling for this glory train, Elizabeth Warren, and it's just a head fake. And she got the nerves to sit here. Clinton said she had been counseling Democratic White House hopefuls to warn, warn them that voter suppression, hacking, fake news stories, and a lack of election security in 2016 had contributed to her own election loss and that a failure to address those issues could lead to Democrats' defeat once again in 2020. No, sister girl. No, fake and fraud. You are a terrible candidate. You don't know how to campaign. You just assume that your your husband, you ain't got what your husband got. And you ain't got what Obama got. You just suck at campaigning. It ain't got nothing to do with you as a woman. If you was a man, you still would have sucked as a campaigner. You don't know how to campaign. Well, I won the Senate. You won the Senate in Westchester County because nobody knows anybody in Westchester County running for office to this very minute. I stay like an hour away from it. Nobody knows who's running for office. You picked the easiest place to run for office to become New York State Senator. The easiest. Hell, I can run and win that in the office. I'm not going to do it. And you became the Senator of New York. Anybody could have won that. So that don't give you no credibility. 
Obama making you Secretary of State don't give you credibility because you was a crappy Secretary of State. You go, you 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 were bloodthirsty and hungry to have blacks and and Africans getting killed in North Africa and Saudi Arabia. I mean, in the I mean not in Saudi Arabia, but in the Middle East. You couldn't wait to go to war with Syria. Couldn't wait to go back. Uh, uh, you know, dump on Afghanistan. I mean, Afghanistan even more, or or um, uh, Iran. Couldn't wait. Yeah, you didn't want to spend time with the people in the Midwest, what you and your husband killed the economy personally, all on your own, killed that economy in the Midwest. But you expect those Midwest people to vote for your behind? No, they voted for Trump. Because they said, man, we got to, we, man, no, man, this woman and her husband is the reason why we ain't got no jobs here. Why are we going to sit there and support her? We'll rather believe this phony and hope to God. That he do something versus a person that we know ain't going to do a doggone thing for us. Hell, you were trying to push the TPP would have killed them people in war. And you wonder what, are you going to blame the loss on somebody else and something else? You on a circuit, on a tour, talking about how these things will cause them to lose in 2020 when it was what you did that caused us to lose in 2020. I mean, 2016, and it's going to cause us to lose in 2020. This election manipulating, this election rigging, this campaign strategy of suppressing the votes, using superdelegates, closing the primaries, not opening them for all people to vote. You tell me that's not democracy? That you, oh, we're going to close the primaries. We only want Democrats voting this election. She's been. She's been inspiring. She's been training. She's been educating Democratic hopefuls running for the White House how to deal with suppression. Ah, uh, maybe it's not you teaching them how to deal with suppression. Maybe you teaching them how to suppress. Because she sure did that in 2016. Hacking. Nobody hacked the election. It's already been proved nobody hacked the election. WikiLeaks, somebody hacked some information and gave it to WikiLeaks because your dumb behind didn't know how to secure your server. And the DNC didn't know how to secure their server. And they said it took place within the vicinity, so it had to be somebody tied to the DNC, mainly from the inside, that hacked that information. Now, I can go into detail and tell you who I believe did it, but you're going to call me a conspiracy theorist. When everything she's saying right here is a theory. And you got nerd talking about suppression, hacking, fake news. Your husband allowed corporations to buy news companies, which means these corporations tell the news companies what to say and what to do. There's no freedom of press. There's no open journalism going on no more. This is my narrative. This is what you say. And if you say anything else, your butt is gone. You're fired. Can't ask Ed Schultz because he's going to be with the Lord. Can't ask Phil Donahue. Well, you can't ask him. You can ask anybody that worked for NBC and they start telling the truth about what's going on. They fired them. Why? Because corporations need to make sure they keep their advertising dollars so they're going to say whatever they need to say to prop up their donors. Raytheon. Northam Grumman. Military complex pharmaceutical industry, all that. So you're going to talk about fake news? You got free press and from fake news. And you propped up Trump. Your husband asked Trump to run. Your husband asked Trump to run because you thought it was an easy win for you to beat this guy. Your husband sat there and told Trump to be as horrible as he can so she can win. Because Trump did not want to be, be president. He just wanted to get his name out there to build his brand. He would have been grateful being a loser to you. Maybe not to um, Barack Obama because he's black. But to you, he would have been happy at losing. But it turned on you. Because of your hubris and your cocky, arrogant attitude. I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm locked up. I'm the anointed one. I'm the chosen one like Neo. Your butt lost, he won. That man did everything in the book to not win that election.
Oh, I grab him by the pee. I can't wait. Everything. And you're still off. And you want to blame this on Republicans. You want to blame this on suppression from outside the Democratic Party. Hacking from outside the Democratic Party. Stories. News stories. Get out of here with this mess, man. <clears throat> this is one of those moments we stand at the crossroad of our own crisis and democracy. Get out of here with that word salad BS. Racists and white supremacists like you, like your husband, who came up with the crime bill with Joe Biden. Joe Biden came up with the crime bill. Bernie Sanders signed off for it. You preached it and teached it, and your husband made it a law. The most racist bill in history, next to Jim Crow. Matter of fact, it is known as the new Jim Crow that's still in effect today would allow private prisons to enslave black people and make them work for nothing. You did that. And you got the nerves to say racist and white supremacist views are lifting up in the media in the White House when you one of the biggest races around. Oh, but I got a lot of black friends. The most successful white supremacists surround themselves with black people. Because they need to hide behind black people. And thank God for Obama. If it wasn't for Obama, everybody would know Joe Biden's record. But everybody know it now because people know how to look it up. White supremacists to the T. He thinks he's supreme, can't apologize, nothing. But now it's biting him in the butt because he can't even remember where he at and five seconds later. She said racist and white supremacist views are lifting up in the media and in the White House. It's lifting up in your mouth right now. Hard fought for civil rights to strip back thanks to you and your husband. Can't blame that on Trump. That was going on before Trump. Now, Trump is taking his place in that. He's going to make sure he take advantage of it and he's going to blame it on you. Well, if it wasn't for the Clintons, I wouldn't be able to do that. Well, if it wasn't for Obama, I wouldn't be able to do that. You guys are giving him tools to use. You're giving it to him. Rules of law are being undermined. You broke all kind of election laws and they have not even prosecuted you for it. Our norms and institutions are under assault. You right now running your mouth is putting people under assault. And that includes the single most important fight of our time, the fight to protect the right to vote. You've got the nerves to say that out of your mouth. You cheater. You cheater. And I don't care if my mama don't like it, my friends, I don't give a crap. It's bona fide proving that you rigged the primaries in 2016 and then you go try to blame it on everybody but yourself. Russia did it. Uh, that guy across the street did it. That baby did it. Uh, I think uh, 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 I think that Pooh's puppet. All that kind of BS. Clinton has mostly cut a low profile since the shock in 2016 election loss to President Trump and she need to go back up on the rock. Go be the grandma that you always needed to be you, your career is done it's over with the only hope that you have and god this is why i will i won't even support elizabeth warren even if she could make some things happen because she's too close to clinton and i wouldn't doubt she probably make clinton her vice president and then you're gonna lose again on tuesday addressing about 300 people and that's all it's gonna be she can't even pack up a high school gymnasium she can't even fill up a, a broke down denny's before 300 people in washington dc clinton said she was moved back into the spotlight by work done by these such as stacy abrams stacy abrams the one who didn't have the balls to call out the person she was running against who happened to be the Secretary of State, a recipe for cheating? The man who's in charge of the elections of the state of Georgia, she didn't tell him that he need to step down. She did not demand that he step down in order to run for that position. No, let's just let it go. It's going to be fair. And you lost because he rigged the election? You had that coming. Just like saying, I'm, I'm a date Ike Turner. Ike Turner, you know, he haven't beat a woman in 10 years. Because I don't know what would want to be with his behind. 
But I'm going to date them. And you don't think Ike Turner ain't going to knock your behind out and you do something wrong? Get out of here with that stuff. We're witnessing. Abrams has said that elections were stolen from her and formed a voting rights group to combat allegations of suppressing the vote. The election was stolen because you gave them the keys. Remind me of that episode of Martin when, when Method Man came in and Martin was giving everything to Method Man. You gave it to him. You can't say he stole nothing. You gave it to him. And that's what Stacey Abrams did. She gave it to that man to steal. So you were complicit in it, Stacey. I like you. I, I mean, sister, you're black sister. You're smart. You're intelligent. You should have been the gov you should have been the governor of Georgia. And how? By telling his butt to step down from his position in order to run for office. That way, it could have been fair and have true election integrity experts be on top of that campaign. But you didn't do it. And now she has this organization supposed to be fighting vote suppression. You want to deal with um, rigging? Move the ranked choice voting. You want to deal with rigging? Go back to paper ballots. You want to deal with rigging? Have real deal um, integrists at the polling stations. Count every vote by paper. Get rid of the machines. Get rid of the computers. Hillary Clinton said, we are witnessing a deliberate and ongoing effort to undermine the integrity of our election and silence the millions of Americans. Witness it. You are witnessing. We are witnessing. You participated in it. You strategize it. You ever seen Ocean Eleven before they do the break-in, before they do the heist? They got to pull out all the, the blueprints of where they need to go and how they going to go in here and cut this and, and go through this vent and all that kind of stuff. It was a planned strategy. She got the nerves to say, we witnessing a deliberate and ongoing effort to the undermine integrity of our election. You strategize it. You had the blueprint. You had your cohorts, your partner involved, like Debbie Wasserman Schultz. And y'all planned this thing to tight, take it from Bernie Sanders. And I wouldn't doubt the way Bernie Sanders won't say anything about it. He could have been involved with it too. Because right now, his number one job is to keep people in the Democratic Party, the sheepdog people in the Democratic Party. He did it in 2016, and he did it, he's, going, he's doing it now. And I'm here to tell you, Senator Sanders, bruh, they said, bruh, it ain't going to happen again. You can sheepdog people in that party. If they screw you, and you are really winning this thing, they're not going to support San, uh, Warren. They're not going to support Joe Biden. Those people are going to get pissed off and not vote again. Or they're going to go and support Trump again. Those Obama voters, a lot of them decided, now nah, I, I like Obama. I don't like Hillary Clinton. She's a crook. You know, Obama didn't have his good spots. But he didn't rig the elections like Hillary Clinton did. And you expect me to support her? Nah, either I'm not going to vote, I'm going to support Trump. Or like me, I voted green. And we'll do it again this year. It's no accident. No, she said, we are witnessing a deliberate and ongoing effort to undermine the integrity of our election and silence millions of Americans, particularly women, the elderly, the poor, and the color. Yeah, people who you manipulated in 2016. It's no accident, she continues. It's in service of their larger goals of obtaining and keeping the power. Really? Really? Really, Hillary Clinton? You guys are doing whatever you can to retain and keep the power in the Democratic Party. You centric, you're corporate leaning, you third way, you, you, you right wing leaning Democrats, lightweight Republican Democrats, or doing whatever you can to stop true change from happening in your, not just your own party, but happening in the United States period. Right now, you got people in your party that are siding with Trump with this socialism, as, um, not even socialism as, uh, message, but communism message. Donald Trump mentioned something about socialism and communism and Elizabeth Warren sit there and clap her hands like, like she's going to clap them off when she clap her hands for you when she announced that she's supporting you for office. Clinton said that in 2016, 
200,000 people in Wisconsin were turned away from the poll. Yeah, and also 2016, over 1 million independents were turned away from the poll from voting for Bernie Sanders in New York City because of this closed election in one of the most open, free, interracial, international cities in the world. Why are you locking in? Why are you closing the primaries? New York City, the greatest city in the world, the world's population, uh, most of the world's citizens right here in one area, and you're going to close the primaries. You close the primaries because you didn't want Bernie Sanders' independent base to come in and steal the win from you. Matter of fact, Bernie Sanders won, won most of the states. The so-called states he didn't win, I mean, cities he didn't win, was New York City, I think, Buffalo, and Albany. Both high populated areas. The rest of the state he won. Come to find out there was some rigging going on. A couple of people got in trouble for rigging the election. Uh, the lady that was in charge of the uh, um, polling in Brooklyn uh, got prosecuted. Come to find out this lady who was in charge of this election station got a house half off from Hillary Clinton. Coincidence? Now I think it's rigging, dog. <clears throat> Clinton has faced criticism for not visiting Wisconsin during the 2016 campaign. President Trump narrowly won the state, becoming the first Republican candidate in decades to carry the Badger State. You know why? Because you had a Badger running against him. Yeah, I said it. Officials in Wisconsin made every excuse in the book to prevent people from voting. That's what Clinton said. And you made every excuses in the book to keep people from voting by trying to declare yourself the winner before you were the winner. Talk about how you got all the superdelegate votes. That is rigging in itself when you got superdelegates. It's the people that make the decision, not party insiders. You can run the best campaign and you didn't run the best campaign, so don't get that in your head. And have the best plans, you ain't have no plans. Bernie Sanders' campaign and his plans were 10 times, 10,000 times better than yours. You can get the nomination, you're rigged to get the nomination. You can win the popular vote, yeah, because most of those rigging took place in metropolitan areas where it's millions of people. And you can lose the electoral college and therefore the elections, he said. Yeah, because people smell, they smelt you and you stuck. The former Secretary of State whose email were hacked and released at the height of 2016 campaign warned that the individual campaigns are ill-equipped to deal with cyber threats, which she said should be addressed by the federal government. It was addressed by the federal government, lady. Tosi Gabbard came up with a bill for us to go back to paper ballots. A lot of people came up with a bill for the United States to do rate choice voting. You do a combination of both of those things, you deal with election integrity. Get off the freaking computers when it comes to voting. The former Secretary of State whose email were hacked. No. It wasn't hacked. FBI did not even look at the servers. It was the inside job. And they were released at the height of the 2016 campaign. Warned that the individual campaigns are ill-equipped to deal with cyber threat, which she said should be addressed by the federal government. The federal government should not be suppressing information about rigging. You rigged the election and these hackers expose you, that's your dumb fault. Because you shouldn't have been rigging in the first place. If you, if the hackers would have got all this information and you were in the up and up, you wouldn't have to worry about anything, right? Because you were so slick and sly and think nobody would know, the truth came out. You're a bunch of cheaters and a bunch of riggers. I don't like your party and I don't like most of you. 
and I am not celebrating and hoping that you win. I don't like Trump, don't get me wrong. I'm only going to celebrate and support people that's going to support my people, number one. And I'm not going to sit here and take a L and kiss the butt and bite the bullet to support cheaters. Because horrible as Trump is, their system in the Republican Party does not encourage the BS that you guys encourage. And I would never join that party. I would never support that party. Not one iota. But on the other hand, I don't have to support you. And I don't have to carry you. I don't have to do nothing for you. Especially when you're known doing things by ill will. Clinton warned that phony false online news story. You mean Correct the Record, the organization hired by David Brock that you hired, put a million dollars in their campaign to sit here and spread false information? You got the nerves to talk about all these false fake news companies when you had your own troll farm suppressing, badgering, and beating up anybody that tried to support Senator Sanders? Get out of here with this mess. Are wrecking havoc on the election process. You act like people are not smart enough to look at your horrible stinking record and find out the truth. You can't get fake news to change that, baby. Your record is your record. And if your record say you're horrible and you suck, fake news can't report that fake when it's true. On the election process, pointing to the Comet Pizza incident in which a government showed up in Washington Pizzeria believing the online rumor that Clinton was, uh, was running a child sex ring there. Look, I don't know what to believe no more because I can't stand none of you. You're all of them, you evil trolls, and I wouldn't doubt anything. If people do that in real life, what make you think that I'll, you won't be able to do nothing like that? What make you so special? Not saying that happened, but I'm not. Oh, who said it didn't happen? You expect me to believe you because you say it didn't happen? Oh, Robert, you should automatically believe it didn't happen. You don't tell me what I should believe and what I shouldn't believe. Here's one thing I believe. You rigged the election in 2016 against uh, Bernie Sanders supporters. I wouldn't even say Ber against Bernie Sanders. I'll put it on Bernie Sanders supporters because he could have been complicit. But you rigged it on his supporters. And for you to think that somebody's going to support you after that, get out of here. I'm almost done. Clinton warned that Russia, when Russia... It's the Democratic Party putting on a Russian bear outfit trying to act like they're from Russia. Yeah, they got an SSR shirt on, USSR, and there's no such thing as USSR. Yeah, they got the hammer and sickle, and they don't... Russia is a capitalistic country now. It's not a communist country, by the way, Republicans. <clears throat> she blamed Trump for spreading fake endorsements and outright lies about Democrats, saying his re-election campaign is spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on Facebook ads each week that violates social media company terms of service. And your organization didn't do that? You're supposed to be the knight in shining army? You're supposed to be the saint? Get out of here with this mess. That's what... David Brock and Correct the Record was a Facebook troll farm spreading this information. Get out of here with that stuff. You know, they're preparing a medal once again and that the U.S. has done nothing to keep them out. They have. Guess what? Your Democrats and your Republicans refused to sign the bill that Tulsi Gabbard put on the floor telling, uh, helping us go back to paper ballots and possibly starting us moving toward the way of ranked choice voting. They have. Your party and you wouldn't have supported the bill because you got to try to control everything from the election to run your own primaries. We have a fundamental set of threats to the bedrock of our democracy. Start with this big talk. And anyone who stands in the way of confronting those threats from Mitch McConnell and his allies to the president himself, to you, to Debbie Wasserman Schultz, to Robbie Mook, to Neera Tan, and all you frauds is abdicating their responsibility to protect and defend the Constitution. You got the nerves to talk about protecting and defending the Constitution. Going to Libya and killing a dictator that you will, couldn't wait to kill, trying to be like Obama because he killed um, um, Osama Bin Laden. 
trying to get your record up, trying to get your uh, portfolio up, that had nothing to do with the Constitution. Nothing. You rigging the election was violating all parts of the Constitution. You're a habitual constitutional lawbreaker. Good idea. I was the first person who ran for president in more than 50 years without the protection of the Voting Rights Act. That has nothing to do with you losing your election. Trump was also the first person who ran for president who were not protected by the Voters' Rights Act. And let me just say it makes a difference. We saw it once again in 2018 in case study and voter suppression. Voters face intimidation and harassment. Voter ID requirements amount to a modern day poll tax. No, I don't. Look, I'm not for, uh, look, as long as you got ID, I believe you should have an ID to go vote. I don't believe you should have a voter's ID, but I believe your driver's license or, what, or, or your state ID shows that you're registered to vote. That's enough for you to vote. I don't think you should be able to walk in a voting booth and you're not registered or, or unless it's an open primary. You're not registered and you don't have ID. Don't make that a Republican thing. Democrats agree with that too. And that's not a Monday poll tax. A Monday poll tax, you about to get me pissed off now. A Monday poll tax, uh, you know what a poll tax was? My grandma couldn't even go sit there and vote because they had jelly beans in the jar, multiple colors, and she had to actually count jelly beans in the jar or count the certain color of jelly beans in the jar without counting physically. She had to actually look at the freaking jar and guess how much it is. And guess what? Of course, she's she going to guess wrong because they didn't want black people vote. This ain't the same thing, Hillary. You just sucked. You suck, you suck, you suck. Now, I know Bill might disagree, but you suck. And let me just say it makes a difference. Vote ID requirements made up for the purpose of prevention of certain people to cast a vote that would be counted. Why shouldn't you have vote um, some kind of ID? You don't have to have a ID that just say voter's ID. That's wrong. But having a driver's license in New York, we ought to have it. In Virginia, you got to have it. When is that a big deal? There are fewer voting places. Guess who cut? There are fewer voting places. Oh, God, this lady. There are fewer voting places because David Wasserman Schultz in the primaries cut the voting places. I had people who I were in charge of getting them to the voting places. Uh, their particular voting location because I worked with the union and we were out there trying to get people out to vote. I had people that normally go to a certain lo location close to their home, elderly women, and they moved across town. How do you expect this elderly woman who normally votes in her own district going across town where she have no car, she have a rollator, you know, a walker, and she can barely get to the location in her neighborhood and you're going to send her to another neighborhood to go vote? And you tell me that ain't voting suppression, Hillary Clinton? You guys did that. This was in the Democratic primaries. Had nothing to do with the Republican primaries. Had nothing to do with the general election. Oh, I'm almost done. There were longer lines. Yeah, there was longer lines because she made it long on purpose because she couldn't vote. You cut the voting places. When you got less voting places to go vote, guess what? The lines is going to be long. That is called voter suppression because it is designed where, to wear people out where they are not going to vote. And you're not going to keep the line open. You're going to cut it off at a certain time, 7 o'clock, so people won't be able to get their vote in. And they wait in line three hours. Malfunctioning equipment. If you get off the computers and go back to paper ballots, you want to have malfunction of equipment. I'm done with this story. Let me get off this before I get pissed off. So the bottom line, man, she has the mitigated goal to go out here and run her mouth on election lack of integrity when she is the poster child of election lack of integrity. I don't like to use the word shut up. Sh 
shut up about this issue, Hillary Clinton. I'm not going to call you Miss Clinton. I'm not going to call you Secretary of State Clinton because you are a person just like me. And I'm going to talk to you like any other fool on the street. And I'll talk to Bernie the same way if I needed to. You got the nerve to talk about election integrity when you lack election integrity. Boy, y'all, y'all, you, who, you got some nerves because you suck so bad. Because you can't campaign two cents. You had to send everybody out there to do the campaign for you, and it didn't work. You rigged the system against Bernie Sanders supporters, yet you thought they still was going to support you. You were you, you got the nerve to even say Bernie Sanders didn't do enough to get them to come support me like I did for Obama. I did all I could, and my people went and supported Barack Obama. Most of your women supporters didn't support Barack Obama. The Midwest came out for Barack Obama because of Joe Biden. Because they were hoping that if something happened to this Negro, we get Joe Biden. So don't you dare, dare think you're going to smooth that over and think we ain't going to catch it. You're a liar. Even James Comey said that. They just use a prettier word. That wasn't the truth. Stop using the word that wasn't the truth. Call him a liar, James Comey. If some, if you're not telling the truth, you're a liar. I've lied before. <laughs> you know, most people don't tell the truth because they fear what'll happen if you do tell the truth. So guess what they're gonna do? Lie. Some lies are intentional, some lies are based out of fear. Hers are always intentional. You sitting up here going on the circuit, lying in these people's face, trying to make it seem like you pro-election integrity when you're the, one of the most corrupt women, a corrupt politician, corrupt being. You can never be trusted when you start talking election integrity out your mouth. Because the moment you talk it out your mouth, the devil and all his lies are coming out, out your mouth. Go back to being a grandma, don't show your face in the elections. I'm warning you people, anybody who tried out Hillary Clinton as the nominee, if you do that, if you tried out this crook, this liar, this cheater, this rigor of elections, yeah, I personally hold her responsible for it. You trot her out to your campaign. That is a guaranteed sign that your butt is going to lose. Mark my words. Read my lips. This is from Bob TV. Because I predicted the last two times and I was right on it. I may not be the smartest person in the world, but I got common sense. And I can see some things coming down the pike. You sit there, Elizabeth Warren or any other person. You too, Bernie Sanders. You sit there and try it out Hillary Clinton. You sit there and try it out any of these Democratic numbnuts. Even Obama, you will lose the election. You want to win an election? Stay with your game, game plan of giving the people what they want, advocating for their needs. If you find out what the people need and you advocate for it and you get it to them, you'll win. But the moment you start trying out these Democrats that Republicans do not like and never will. Independents can't stand, most never will. You're going to lose the election. Because in the general, having a black vote is not enough. Having a certain part of the women vote is not enough. The independent base is what you're going to have to go after in the general election. And you're going to have to peel off some Republicans if you're going to win. That's exactly what Trump did, and that's how he won. But he didn't do it. He didn't go out there and do that alone. Your girl Hillary Clinton, the same lady running this bull crap out of her mouth, she helped him by rigging the election, not understanding that if you cheat somebody, 
They're going to be pissed off enough that they ain't want to have nothing to do with you. Which means they ain't going to go vote for you. They either they ain't going to vote, they're going to vote for a third party, or they're going to vote for Trump just in spite because you did that. Who supports cheaters? Who support riggers? Who support con artists? Now, if they're part of your family, you might do it out of love, but you ain't gonna, you're not going to support them 100%. And 12 million people left the Democratic Party. And I don't even think majority of them came back, even to this day. Let's say 3 million came back. I believe 75% ain't coming back because they don't like the Democratic Party after what they did in 2016. And they ain't going to never support that party. They're not going to send no money. They're not going to march. And I don't care if you got the best candidate in the world. They're not going to register to support that candidate, which is a good thing for you. But in the general, you got to understand these same people are not going to support you even if you win the ele um, primaries. They're either not going to vote or they're going to support the other person. So stop with this election talk. You 